Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Doug Lane. I'm senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And I want to welcome you once again to The Vine, our online campus here at Wrightsville. Today you're in for a really special treat. Our new associate and my new good friend, Insu Kong, is going to be delivering our message for today. Insu grew up in South Korea and has only been living here in the United States for four years. You're going to hear a lot about her story in today's sermon, but it's just amazing to see uh, this young woman who has come all the way from South Korea, some 8,000 miles away, and has dedicated her life to sharing the gospel with us here in the United States as a way of saying thank you to the first Methodist missionaries who brought the gospel to South Korea. Well, again, I'll let her tell more about that story um, because it's, it's truly amazing. But uh, I hope that you will um, open your heart, open your ears, your eyes, and your mind to all that God has to say to you through and through today. Let's now take a deep breath and begin our worship service together. Please join me with our congregational prayer that you'll find printed on the screen. Holy and loving God, we thank you that you know us fully. You see our hearts and know our desires, and we can't keep any secrets from you. In this time of worship, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts through the breath of your Holy Spirit, so that we can perfectly love you and fully praise your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spend the news that God is in our land. And we'll know we are Christians by our love. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to get to lead us in prayer this morning. Will you pray with me now? Holy and loving God, we thank you for gathering us together in your name. God, we thank you for your power that enables us to be together, united in your spirit, even when we are physically apart. And God, we thank you for the promise that when we don't know how to pray or what we ought to pray, your very spirit intercedes for us. We are swimming in the ocean of your grace. God, your kingdom doesn't have an entrance exam. It doesn't require a degree and we don't have to compete with others for a spot. The only admission requirement is willingness. Holy Spirit, please strengthen our willingness so that we will go wherever you call us. Use us as you see fit for your glory. God, your love for us is completely unrelated to our usefulness. And yet you have invited us to be your co-workers in bringing about your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So today we pray for our world. God, we ask that you would make us faithful stewards of your creation. Open our eyes to injustice in the world. 
open our eyes to the suffering in the world and give us the strength to keep from shying away. God, we pray especially now for the people that we're close to, whose needs we know, and we name them before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but you listen to them. We know we can trust you and we love you. So we ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we transition now into a time of reflection and generosity, I'd like to remind you that you can always give to the mission of the Wrightsville United Methodist Church through our smartphone app, our website, wrightsvilleumc.org, and of course, through the U.S. mail. Let's now continue to worship God. kids, I'm Pastor Julia. I have a question for you today. What do you think is the most important part of your body? Maybe is it your legs so you can walk around or dance a little bit? Or maybe it's your hands so that you can wave to people? Maybe your face so you can smile? Or your ears so you can listen? or your eyes so you can see people? Well, what do you think is the least important part of your body? Maybe one of your pinky toes? How about elbows? Elbows seem kind of weird. Well, let's see, I have a cup of water here. I wonder if I could drink this cup of water without using my elbows. So let's see, if I didn't have elbows, what do you think I should do? How should I try and get to the water? Maybe if I stretch my neck a little bit, or if I, nope, I can't come around to the side and get it. Okay, what if, what if I, I put it over my head and tried to pour the water into my mouth? What do you think, is that gonna work? Let's try. Oh no, that just got all over my face. <sighs> well, I think it turns out that we need elbows. In fact, we really need all parts of our body so that our bodies can work the way that they're supposed to. You know, in the Bible, a bunch of times, people in the Bible refer to the church as Christ's body. That means that we are supposed to go out into the world and be Jesus. And that means that we need every single person who's a part of the church to do their part. So just like you need all of your fingers and all of your toes and your elbows, there's a job for every single person in the church to help us to be the body of Christ. So let me ask you, What's something that you know that you're really good at? Maybe you know that uh, you can sing, or maybe you know that you're really friendly, or that you're good at reading, or maybe you can run faster than anybody else that you know. Well, whatever it is that you're really good at, there's some way that God wants to use that to help the church. So I hope that today you will keep your eyes open and your ears listening to see how God might want you to be a part of the body of Christ. Let's say a prayer together. God, thank you for the body of Christ. 
Thank you that we all have an important part to play in your work. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm Eun Soo Kang, one of the associate pastors here at the Riceville United Methodist Church. I'm so grateful for this privilege of delivering God's message. Our scripture reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Christians in Ephesus. In this letter, Paul emphasized the importance of unity in the church through Christ. Let us embrace this message in our heart. Now, hear the word of God from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8 and 10 through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called to one hope when you are called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infant, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scamming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is, Christ. From Him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, as each part does each work. This is the word of God for us, people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Speak through me, and if necessary, in spite of me and always beyond me, so that your word might be heard by your people this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On my first Sunday at Riceville, Pastor Doc mentioned, Eunsu would be good at feeding he here because she ordered fried fish, fried okra, and sweet tea at lunch table. The funny thing is that I was actually born a southerner. I came from South Korea, not North Korea. I didn't choose it, but I never dreamt of living in North Korea. Painfully, Korea is the only divided nation in the world. Specifically, the Korean War in 1950s between the two Koreas ended with a timeout or ceasefire, which means Korea is technically still at war. But it is not as if I was dodging bullets every day on my way to church or schools. Even though Korea is a divided country, I have always felt safe. Ever since I was a kid, it has been this way. And also, recently, Korea is super safe, one of the most secure countries in the world. So this whole South and North business, while it's a big deal in politics, never really crashed into my daily life. Of course, the ongoing divide and tension in Korea are a big thing, but they don't rule my life. It's like asking me, which one tastes better for you, Pepsi or Coke? 
Well, as a Pepsi girl, I always choose Pepsi, and it makes me struggle if I should have a Coke when there is no Pepsi at the restaurant. But that doesn't mean Coke threatens my life. In other words, it is an important matter, but it doesn't have enough conflict to control my life. But for me, the past year has been a wild roller coaster with conflict and split happening in every corner of my life. Well, I have dealt with small and big conflicts before in various contexts, but last year was on a whole different level. It was the first time something shook in entire my life. After graduating from Duke Divinity School last year, I was so full of hope and ready to dedicate my life to serving God and God's people, just like John Wesley when he famously said, the world is my parish. But as soon as I started my ministry at the church at God's first appointment, I ran into the disaffiliation issue. It was a year-long marathon of discussions and sometimes arguments and emotional battles every day, and it eventually led to the church going its parting ways. It was a challenging time, full of self-doubt and frustration about my leadership and qualifications as a pastor. I couldn't see, and I couldn't figure out God's plan. But the really painful one was, the more I spoke the truth, the more I felt like I was jeopardizing the unity of the church as a person who had a responsibility of leading the unity. Through all this, I pondered what unity in the church as the body of Christ really means. And I realized that unity is not about forcing a choice between A or B. It is about living in harmony with both A and B. In other words, it is walking together in faith, guided by one God for all of us. Today, in his letter, the Apostle Paul reminds us of this unity. Ephesians is a letter to the Christians in Ephesus, a busy and diverse city with lots of trading, religions, and different social class. It was a place that wasn't a stranger to controversies and conflict. But in the middle of all this chaos, the Apostle Paul delivered a radical message in chapter 2, boldly claiming, you have been joined together into a holy temple in the Lord, a dwelling place for God. And in chapter 3, Paul recounts how God, through Son Jesus Christ, destroyed the wall of hostility that divided Jews and Gentiles. Jesus made a new covenant with His blood, giving all of us salvation and fellowship. This is a powerful affirmation of unity. And then Paul begins chapter 4 by urging us to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. This calling is not just for pastors or leaders. It's for every member of the body of Christ. God has a unique purpose for each one of us in God's plan. And our unity is essential to fulfill that plan because we are all called to one hope in one God. And what does this unity truly mean? It is not about seeking uniformity, as if we all need to think about and act exactly the same. Instead, it is about living together in love embracing our diversity of backgrounds and perspectives. True unity is not the absence of differences, but the ability to bear with one another in love. And that is the beauty of the church. Let us imagine an orchestra. Each musician plays a different instrument, but together they create a beautiful harmony. 
Likewise, in the body of Christ, each one of us brings unique gifts and talents, and when we come together in unity, we create something beautiful and powerful. In verses 4 to 6, Paul highlights the foundational truth that bind us together. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. These principles transcend our differences and draw us closer to one another. But frankly, unity does not come without challenges. In verses 14 and 15, Paul warns against being swayed by false teaching and division. So to safeguard our unity, we must be rooted in the truth of God's word and in the love of Christ. As we grow in our faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, we will become more mature and speak the truth in love. Sometimes it can be hard to address issues or disagreements, but when we approach each other with love and humility, we can work through those challenges together. Unity within the body of Christ is not an ocean. It's a command. In verse 3, Paul says, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of the peace. It takes effort on our part to maintain this unity, but it is worth it because it reflects the heart of Christ. If we are not united in God, we may end up focusing on our own desires rather than God's plan. Without unity in God, we may not see the gift God has bestowed upon us. Without unity in God, we may overlook the priorities needed for the kingdom of God. Without unity in God, we may hinder the growth of the seeds or even neglect to plant the seed that God has given us. And the mission for the church's unity should spread beyond the walls of its building and even far beyond them and even toward the other Christians whose culture and language are quite different from us. When we make effort to keep the unity of the Holy Spirit, we will witness how God works through God's people and bears fruit in abundance, exceeding our imagination. And this ties back to my personal journey. Have you ever wondered how I made a decision to cross the Pacific Ocean and come here? It all began with $88. In 1883, Lucinda Baldwin, a woman from Ohio, happened to read an article about the difficult situation of Korean women in one of the Methodist magazine. The article said, Korean women were only called someone's wife or someone's daughter without having their own names. That means their dignity was not respected. And this deeply saddened Lucinda. So she decided to donate $88, which came from selling her late husband's prosperity. This was no small amount in those days, and it was even more significant considering it was her lifeline, especially given the state of women's rights in America during that time. This $88 carried the legacy of her husband and her survival, but she sent it to help Koreans she had never met and to a country she knew nothing about. She wrote a letter with this $88. I am sending this money for a Korean women. It would be a joy to me if this money will become a seed until Korea shall be reached by gospel light. This heartfelt donation letter moved many Methodist women, leading them to give their offerings 
to a country that they had never been to. That $88 became seed money for greater things, and two years later, in 1885, the first female missionary, Mary Scranton, was sent to Korea by Methodist women, and with her son, Dr. William Scranton, sent by Methodist Church. And one of her ministries was to support the Korean female Christians, setting up schools, hospitals, churches, and institutions that are globally recognized today. And Scranton Women's Leadership Center in the capital city of Korea, Seoul, is still affiliated with the United Women in Faith is one of her legacies. Six years ago, there was the student who just started her work at the Scranton Center, and she learned about how this $88 seed money blossomed and about selfless sacrifice made by God's people from the states, including Mary Scranton. And this deeply moved her, and she decided to dedicate her life as a seed and as a way to honor and repay their love and sacrifice. And today, that same woman stands here at the Riceville pulpit, sharing God's world. The seed money at $88 has borne abundant fruit of love. And all of these are fruit that would not have been born if they had not been united in God. So sisters and brothers, let us remember when we pray whenever we share the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. We pray, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. We, who are many, are one body. The work of the Holy Spirit is unity. When we say yes to God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who brings us together with the precious gift, the seeds that God truly wants from us are planted in our church, our community, and the world. We don't know exactly when they will grow or how they will grow. Sometimes we don't even see them growing, but God knows, God sees, God listens, and God remembers. Beloved Riceville, where do you stand today? Are you ready to sow those seeds of unity, love, and faith? Are you ready to create a future brimming with God's blessings? Remember, each one of us has the potential to be that $88 seed the beginning of something incredible, transformative, and divine. Now, this is the time for us to respond to this calling from God as one body and one spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, inspire us to plant the seeds of unity, love, and faith just like the powerful $88 seed. Help us respond to your call, standing together as one. Give us the strength to serve you and our fellow people, knowing you are with us every step of the way. We pray this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved Riceville, remember, we, who are many, are one body. Let us cherish the unity of the Holy Spirit through the bond of peace. Let us be grounded in Christ, embracing one another in love. As one body and one spirit, let us sow the seeds of unity, love, and faith. With hearts united, go forth to share God's love and blessings with the world. May our God of love and peace, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go with you and stay with you these days and forevermore. Amen.
May the road.